Today, I'd like to read you from Genesis chapter 13 and talk to you a little bit about our rights. You'll see what I mean. Genesis chapter 13, verses 8 and 9, where we read this. So Abraham said to Lot, Please let there be no strife between you and me and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brethren. Is not the whole land before you? Please separate from me. If you take the left, then I will go to the right. Or if you go to the right, then I will go to the left. God did something special when he called Abram out of Ur of the Chaldees and promised Abram all of the land of Canaan. But when Abram brought his nephew Lot with him into the land, it wasn't long until there was conflict between Abram and Lot because each of them had considerable herds of livestock and their herdsmen fought over the choice grazing lands. Abraham and Lot claimed to serve the Lord God instead of the local Canaanite idols, and their conflict made them look like hypocrites. Hey, these two men worship the same God, but they fight with each other. The logical solution was to separate the flocks and to give them different grazing lands. But who would go where? This is when Abram exercised his right to lay down his rights. Look at what Abram told his nephew. If you take the left, then I'll go to the right. Or if you go to the right, then I'll take the left. Since Abram was the eldest, and since God gave all the land to Abram and not to Lot, this was pure generosity on the part of Abraham. That's what caused him to make this offer to Lot. We're almost tempted to think that it was weakness and not generosity. After all, when a person doesn't take all of their rights, aren't they showing weakness? But Abram was quite able to fight when he had to. He did not yield to Lot out of weakness, but out of love and out of trust in God. A few acres of grazing land didn't seem worth fighting for to a man of eternal perspective. This theme of giving up our rights is found throughout the Bible. God was glorified when Paul, out of love, waived his right to be supported by the gospel. You'll find that in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. God was glorified when Jesus, out of love, waived his right to an existence that knew no human suffering or trial by experience. You'll find that in Philippians chapter 2. In fact, here Abram fulfilled the New Testament principle of love found in Philippians chapter 2 verse 4. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. But if we give up our rights, then who's going to look out for us? Abram could do this for one reason. He learned that God would provide for his needs, and he didn't have to worry about being too generous. Abraham knew that whatever Lot chose, God would make sure that Abram came out all right. In previous experience in the land of Egypt, Abram thought that he had to take fate into his own hands. Abram thought that he had to look out for his own rights. Now, being wiser, he was willing to let God look out for his entrance. Right or left didn't matter to Abram because God would be there. Because he trusted in God, Abram did not have to be obsessed with his own rights. And neither do we. Now, of course, there may be a time and a place to stand on principle and to claim a right. And sometimes doing so is good for others and not only for ourselves. Yet we never forget the bigger principle. Do we really want God to deal with us purely according to what we deserve? If that were the case, then the only right we would truly have is the right to be judged by his perfection. Everything else is the free gift of God, and nothing has to do with our rights. Friends, we can do what is right by committing our rights to God, and we can do it 
even today, in honor and praise to him.